Welcome to my workshop. Today we'll show you how to make an alchemist's shop. There shall be books, potions, scrolls, ogre toenails, and pickled noses of goblin kind. Alright, let's begin. The alchemist's shop will be based just on its stone foundation for now. I made the foundation from XPS foam. This foam is quite thick for this purpose when comparing it to minis. However, I decided to keep it that high. Now we have an imaginary cellar. Next I started making the stonework. I did this by shaping the bricks with a blade. And then I worked my way through the grooves to make them more defined. Very easy, you can use a pen, pencil or the end of a small brush. Okay, done. Next I cut out simple stairs. Perhaps a bit too small, but minis do fit on the stairs. Good. And of course I shaped the stonework here as well. Next I applied textures with the sacred ball of aluminum foil. A note on posture, I tried to work as much as possible in a standing position to optimize well-being. I encourage you to binge watch YouTube in a better position as well. Get up. What I recommend is a standing table for crafting. With that done, I used my X-Acto knife to cut all sorts of damage and wear into the stonework. Then the floors are made from craft sticks. I was lazy and no, efficient and didn't even split these into thinner planks. These are oddly thick planks and very quick to glue on. When gluing the planks in I made sure to leave room for the plank walls. I textured the wood by cutting in some deep visible grooves. All good, next I poked in some support corner pieces. I cut these into a suitable length and then started making the walls from thinner sticks. The planks are glued onto each other in a nice looking, structurally sound way. After getting them in place I just poured in more glue for good measure. Alright, these are all of the walls that are built on the foundation. The rest will be attached to the removable roof. This can become a bit tricky, I thought, and started constructing a frame that fits well on what I've built. With the help of super glue and its instant activator spray, I was able to assemble a nice frame for the roof. Amazing. I continued by finishing the walls. Here I poked in two beams for the doorway. I used plenty of glue to make sure that all stays in place. This step did take quite a long time, perhaps I was just unfocused. Anyway, it is done and next comes the roof. I made the bottom of the roof from cardboard. Just cut a few roughly fitting pieces and you're good to go. You can cut away excess later.
Moving on, I got lots of shingles from cardstock. Sadly, these are not from oats. I then glued on the bits as fast as I could. If you are bored, this is the best thing you can craft. Laying shingles will surely make you grateful for your free time. Luckily, I got some help from Faye. She also here tyrannically decided the color of this roof, pinkish purple. Anyway, some tips for shingles. Make shingles of different sizes. Glue them on messily. As long as you get everything covered, a slightly crooked roof job will look best for a house like this. Lastly, you cover the top of the ridges like this. Shingles are done. Next I painted everything with black. I brushed the stonework in order to get paint into the deep grooves of the foam. And I airbrushed the rest. Let's make this alchemist's shop colorful. I used a orange brown to overbrush all of the planks of the walls. I painted the floors with a slightly brighter brown. And more color. I dry brushed the walls with orange. This will go well with the purple roof. After that, I dry brushed unevenly with yellow. I think this is this is looking quite good, but uh, this house is starting to look like a pumpkin. Good. To get a more worn look to the wood, I dry brushed with a tan. Unevenly, not covering all areas. I didn't wash the brush in between colors, so this tan got some orange into it, which is good. When I was done with that, I also used this on the floors. The main reason this floor is looking pretty good are the deep grooves that I cut into the wood. Try it. I tried a different paint job for the stonework. First I painted over the black with a pale orangey mess. Then I painted individual bricks yellow, orange and red. Without noticing it at first, I painted different shades of these colors, which looked very good. After I was done, the girl insisted on painting some bricks with rose. Good idea. Next it is time to paint the roof. First, Faye painted the shingles with purple. Imagine how boring this house would look if I were the one to choose colors. After that, we dry brushed them with pink. If you want to get your wife, sister or daughter to craft, show her this roof. Go ahead, share this video. Thank you. Using some red, she also made the highlights appear more pink. And finally, we dry brushed gently with white, hitting just a few edges. Assembled, this house looks quite fun now. I continued by dry brushing the stonework with tan before working with washes. Again, I use my standard oil wash. I mixed it from green, brown and black. Tested it on wood, approved it and started staining the stonework. I also added some on the wood so that everything blends together nicely. I made sure to get more of this in corners. I have to say, I was not expecting this to look so good. A good wash never disappoints. If you want to make your own wash, you can get lifetime supply for about $15, or even less. Just get a few oil paints and white spirit. I let Faye do the roof with wash and paper.
then to bring the rest of the house together with the purple roof. We applied diluted dark purple on some areas of the wood and stone. Next we made a beautiful alchemist's shop sign. The paper was attached to a barbecue sticks with the steel wire and then glued at the entrance. We darkened the wood and sign with washes. Now that we can see customers approaching the shop, it is time to make the interior details. Since I had run out of craft sticks, I had to make my own from a piece of wood. I then cut nice bits suitable for tables, table legs and shelves. We made two tables, one of which will be the shop counter. Next I just applied strong tone wash on the wood to make it look good. While that dries, Faye will show you how to make small books, scrolls and potions. Books are made from folded paper strips that are glued in between a thicker colored paper. Scrolls are self-explanatory. And the pretty OK potion tubes are made from straws with rolled up paper bits inside. Ok, next all of the furniture is glued in. The amount of storage space doesn't have to be that realistic, because we would run out of potions and stuff. Before gluing in the little bits, we treated the paper with washes. This transforms our paper scraps into art. You can also do something like this if you got the time. Nice, then we glued in everything. I quickly realized that my initial skepticism regarding Faye's large for scale books was unnecessary. The giant books really make this look more magical. As I glued these into place, I noticed something else brewing. Faye managed to create functioning miniature candles from rolls of paper filled with stearin. For extra immersion, we melted the candles into the table and floor. Then we also glued on a few of these little scrap plastic bits that we painted gold. And lastly, I made a wall hanger from face painting doodles. I stained it with dark washes, most heavily in these folds. Inspired by this, I created another from purple paper. My freehand was not comparable to what we saw in the previous wall hanger, but in the end this worked very well to clothe this empty wall. Since your arrival to the remote town of Elrest, you've been greeted by mystical creatures and the occasional talking pumpkin. Now you're on your way to meet the alchemist to sell your junk. The most peculiar shop stands open, with no doors, welcoming you inside. Your wizard gets a little too excited when he sees all of the scrolls while the rest of you greet the shopkeep. A man-sized dragon stares judgingly on Greg the Barbarian, who is carrying all of your loot from the Goblin Caverns. Okay, now you can start dumping your shit. Let's see how much money you make, you filthy murder hobos. Hey, with a few sticks, some foam, paper and cheap paints, you can really make something epic. Thank you for watching Bard's Craft. Subscribe for more videos and go make something beautiful. Goodbye. 
Goodbye. If you guys support me enough on Patreon, I can start giving Faye salary for this. <laughs>